Welcome generals to Ray Reverse Gaming and in this video I'm doing a tutorial on how to build your army. So there's a lot of material. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to uh, be loading uh, loading um, one of my saves so that we can start uh, getting right into the business. So I'm loading into um, pretty much the beginning of the campaign and this is what we're looking like okay okay all right first thing i want to talk about is generals okay here i am i'm rivers ray rivers and when we go to the headquarters okay what we're going to see is that there are five slots for generals um like i say this is the beginning of the campaign i don't even have my departments established so that's okay we don't need that all right, so when we go into um, the Commander-in-Chief's um, research tree, what we see is that there are places here where you pick up uh, um, generals, okay, but not necessarily generals of armies, okay? So, for example, here you have Artemis Ward, okay? He's a general general who is pretty well, um, pretty good general, but he is not a, he is not a actually a general, a field general. What you have to look for is you have to look for this thing over here where it says plus one general's limit. And in this case, it is um, uh, Benedict Arnold. Okay, down here you see another general. But again, he it doesn't, uh, he's not a, he, it's not a plus one general's limit, so he doesn't, um, he will not go into one of those slots. So to move over a bit more. And we see here plus one general's limit. There's Hor uh, Horatio Gates. And then over here, we have a plus one general's limit. And this is Charles Lee. And then you come down here, and there's a plus one general's limit, and that's Nathan Nathaniel Green. So you've got one, two, three, and four. And those will fill out your generals. Okay, so that's just the start of the iceberg all right okay all right the the first important thing to understand about the game is that there's limits on everything and you have to you have to um um expand um all kinds of things so that um production levels um recruiting levels all the, all of these things you have to expand Okay, which is pretty pretty um, pretty uh, common of a um, of a strategic strategic game like this. For example, over here it's saying to recruit a um, construct a recruiting house in Hartford. Okay, but that's really not um, we're not that's really not building your army in my opinion. Okay, that's that's kind of the stuff that goes on a little bit behind the scenes, more economic than anything. So first thing we want to look at is this right up here, okay? So this is your army limit, okay? And you can see that I have 7 of 21. And the way that you increase your army limit, okay, is in your territories. So for example, if I click on this area, okay, what you see is I have military infrastructure here, okay? Military infrastructure increases the army limit allowing the recruitment of more regiments so and and then what you see is i'm building um, um production infrastructure so um this is a long campaign okay it starts in 775 and i believe it ends in 1780 if everything goes well so you have five years okay but nevertheless you have to be continuously planning for the future and so you, you need to be building you need to be always be aware of this and trying to push push you know you, you will very rapidly start getting closer to your army limit and you have to have these things put in place well before that because it's going to take time for them to build out so that is that is how you get to your army limit uh, how you increase your army limit okay it's by building military infrastructure um when you look at the units themselves, okay, you'll notice that they have provisions and they have ammunition, okay, and provisions 
come from building agricultural infrastructure. Ammunition comes from um, making um, ammunition, and we'll go through that in a minute. Okay, so uh, that's the um, the basics there for the background of how you're going to build up your army. So let's look at um, how we actually do that. All right. So let's we're going to click on Newport, and then this icon here is going to be for to add a new unit. All right. And so at the very beginning, you only have. Uh, a militia regiment, or a supply party, which is a su um, uh, which is wagons, okay, that you can build. So you're very limited, and you're limited because of the research. You have to research other other types of of, of troops um, to be able to um, have different units, different types of reg regiments, uh, specifically um, dragoons and um, fusiliers for um, regular regiments. Okay, so if I click on that, okay, it tells me the first thing I have to do is I have to put a officer here. So I go like that and sure enough, I don't have an officer. So it doesn't matter that I have only seven of 21. The fact of the matter is I don't have any officers. I've already built, I've already built up, I've already built up to my, um, to my limit. And what you'll find in the earlier days, early days, is that um, um, you'll get officers. You'll get officers. They'll come to you. Either they will defect from the from the um, um, British side, or you'll get officers. And your research, you get officers. Um, and sometimes you'll get officers, especially at the very beginning, from these cards that are offered, which are in lieu of the normal the normal um, research pattern so if I click on this card for officer recruitment which is one officer okay you'll see I can I can replace anything in in any of these trees and since this this one here is 61 days I'm going to put it, it it's not really going to matter but I'm going to put him in there okay and then what's going to happen is you're going to see this box here and it's um, spend reputation points to finish this project immediately and here is your reputation over here okay so I have 84 reputation so I can spend that reputation and then the next day I will get that officer so I'm going to spend that reputation 16 points okay and then I'm going to make it run real fast so it gets to the next day this guy here he's going to go into the city And then end of the day, ding. Okay, so you see, Patriots offer ammo. So there's going to be people who are going to offer you ammo. They're going to offer you offer you guns. They're going to offer you supplies. There's going to be officers. Okay, all kinds of things are going to happen. All right, so we're not going to. The, so now we're now we've got an extra officer. So now let's see if we can build an actual regiment. So we start here, militia regiment. And there we go. We've got an officer there. All right. Now the militia regiments. These these boxes represent companies, right? And the militia is um, limited to four four companies. All right. So the way you do that, of course, is you click on there, and it gives you these these options. Okay. Militia, artillery, or minutemen, which are um, um, skirmishers. Okay. And down here, it gives you the option of what type of weapon you want to ar arm them with now. So it's the very beginning of the um, campaign. And I have a whole bunch of um, civilian muskets, but I don't have very many brown besses and I don't have anything else. I did capture a bunch of brown besses, but I gave them to another regiment. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and add um, militia with civilian muskets. So we added them. Add them three, and my basic. Um, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. Um, that's going to be up to the individual um, player. But my basic unit is um, 
I came down to for my militia three militia units and one artillery unit. Okay, so and then when I look at at my artillery, okay, hmm, um, I don't have enough artillery. Okay, I have enough to start. Okay, I use one gun, one gun. Okay, for twenty men, so it's a hundred units in these five guns. Okay, and I only have two. So that so as 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 recruits come into there, into your unit, once it hits two, then it you it will stop bringing in um, troops into your um, artillery regiment, uh, artillery company because it doesn't you don't have enough guns. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, what we do um, is we go up to the market. Okay, and in the market we have different things that we can buy, and it shows all the all the weapons that are available and how much is in storage. You have muskets, cannons, ships, goods, and resources. Okay, so muskets, cannons. So cannons is what we need. Okay, mm, if I remember correctly. That was a three pound galloper gun. So we have one. We've already used one, so that's two. So we need at least three more. So what I do is I go one, two, three, and I buy them, okay? And now I have four in storage. And that will that will be sufficient guns to make sure that that um, company fills out um, as a um, artillery company for that regiment, okay? Now, let's talk about, let's go back over here, and let's talk about um, the different troop types that, sh that you have available in the game. All right. All right. Um, now, as you can see, okay, like here, down here you have this thing called skirmishers okay you already have skirmishers available i'm not quite sure why that's there but skirmishers are already available but uh, you also get two regiments of um of um regular infantry although um they're much better than the militia they're not quite good as other um units such as fusiliers so um, when you're looking at for different unit types are you have skirmishers, you have dragoons, cavalry, you have fusiliers, okay, and then you have um, uh, guards and grenadiers. And these guys are more specialized. You only get one per, per regiment, uh, one per regiment, one company per regiment, and um, they're kind of expensive. They they're they're better trained troops, um, offering, for example, better melee. But so th those are the, those are your your basic troops, troop types. Okay, and now let's look at let's look at weapons. Okay, so all right, like I say, um, start of the year. So y you have. Uh, like any research tree, you have different avenues that you can go for. If you go down this avenue, you have the U.S. musket and you have a Virginia 76, and they're good. They're good. Um, they're good weapons. Okay. Um, um, they're not so expensive. Okay. Um, the way you can compare them is um, by the numbers that you're seeing there. But one really big giveaway is damage. So this gun does 1.6 to 2 in damage okay so you have the American muskets that you can go for um, and then you have the hunter rifle okay and notice how it can deal up to 2.4 damage the difference with this rifle is that it's long range this is this is the rifle that you want for your skirmishers okay you have a dragoon carbine and then the Pennsylvania rifle is also a very um, long-distance uh, rifle. Again, perfect for skirmishers. Over here we have this um, Brown Best 69 and the short Brown Best 69. And the Brown Best is for infantry, 
And again, look at the damage, 2.2. Okay. It doesn't have the range of the hunter, though. Okay. And then you have the short brown bass, and this is a cavalry weapon. You have the Spanish rifle and a French rifle, which if towards, you know, as you get closer towards the end of the campaign, um, you very well may have Spanish or French allies, and they will only, um, as I understand, because I haven't finished my own campaign, the, on the only way that you can reinforce them is with their own rifles. Okay, so the Spanish will use the Spanish 55, and the French will use the Carville 66. So you should look forward to that, and sooner or later you need to get and, um, and um, research those things out. So now let's talk about the production of weapons. Okay. When you come up here, you have a production management section. And you will see here, that these are production points. Okay. And right now we're showing zero of two production points. All right. So when you, you, you have the different categories, and what happens is that you will be offered to produce weapons that are available to you um, either at the beginning of the game, such as a Suhae musket, or that you research. Okay, So when I go to muskets, okay, the only gun I have is a civilian musket. That's the only gun that, that we have. So by clicking on it and hit apply, okay, notice we had two, and it gives me two, two um, it puts those two production points into the civilian musket, okay, which produces 20 per day. You have a little um, quest over here, which is to produce 100 muskets in 52 days, and it gains reputation of plus 5, okay. However, and you can also produce the 3-pound th uh, uh, galloper gun, and that's it. You can't produce the 4-pound galloper gun, okay. You also have ammunition. And I'm going to select on that. Ammunition is very important. Okay. You have to make it. It just doesn't come out of nowhere. So I'm going to take one off there. And I'm going to put one there. And now I'm set up. Okay. I've got my two production uh, points allotted to my civilian musket. Sorry about that. And to my ammunition. And as you go along and you build up your production points, Okay, and once again, um, you see this little, this little um, factory thing. Okay, that's your production infrastructure, and for when you build one of those, then you get an extra production point. Okay, that's how that works. All right. So I think that covers what I wanted to cover with this save. And so now I'm going to go to another save, a more advanced save, so that we can get into, little, into uh, making your army a little bit, um, get into more uh, complicated uh, and better um, organizations and stuff like this and where you're looking at going ahead. But this is the, this is the basic how it works, okay? So let me um, load a save. So I'm loading a uh, slave, a save a little bit um, further into the campaign. Okay, so here we are. We're in December of uh, 1777, and as you can see, I've got all my generals there. So I put a, I, I personally put a big, um, a big um, emphasis on getting my generals. Um, maybe too early to have all five, but that's what I did anyway. All right. So now we're going to. Now we've done a lot more research, and um, if we look at the research trees, okay. Um, for example, we can see I've I've done dragoons, and um, I have some skirmisher training here. I've done fusilier, fusiliers. All right. So those should be available to me now. Artillery. Okay. I don't waste my time on that. 
what I did was I first um, researched six uh, six pound field gun to replace this gun. Okay, it's cheaper to make, and um, um, I'm getting guns fr that I'm capturing from the British. So and so and so and I'm making my um, militia units with three and four pound caliper guns. So I decided to start building six pound. Do the six pounders first to just get some, a better gun than this gun into the game as quickly as possible. And then I moved over um, and I um, researched the howitzers. So here you have the howitzer 5.5, uh, howitzer 8, and then of course over here you have the mortars. Okay, eight inch mortar, ten inch mortar, and a 13-inch sea service mortar. Okay, so I now have those things available to me. Okay, so um, unfortunately, and this save, I'm not sure what happened. Let's hold down here. But you notice that I have 78 um, regiments, and I'm only allotted 77. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure... If I had some, I think I think I had some infrastructure dis, um, 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 destroyed here in a um, an invasion that took place, and so that's why I have more men than I have um, uh, of army of uh, my army my army limit. My army limit is lower than the amount of men that I have. So, what I'm going to do because I want to show you how um, um, what we're looking at now as when, as we're creating new units is that I'm going to delete a few units here okay and we can now see we're at 76 of 77 notice 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 here I have a um, this is this is one of your original. This is one of the original um, units you get to. It has it has um, when you start the game you get two of these regiments. Um, you can put an artillery in there, or you can put six infantry brigades in there. You can also put skirmishers in there if you want. Okay. Like I said, they're better than um, um, your militia, but I don't think they're quite as good as your. Um, fusiliers and here's you see my fus fusiliers okay and then he over here you see I have a um, a cavalry regiment okay they only have um, three companies of 80 men in total all right so let's let's come back down here okay and we should be able to um, to um, create a new regiment, so let's do that. Let's do that here, in Mid Middleburg for Middleborough for. Okay, and now now you see the different now you see the different um, uh, unit types that you can um, you can create. Okay, the fusiliers allowed you to make the infantry regiment, and the dragoons allow you to make the cavalry regiment. So let's do an infantry regiment. Okay, so once again, what we need is a, um, a, uh, an, uh, a commanding officer for the regiment. Okay, and what I'm usually looking for is somebody who's got pretty good balanced traits. And then you're offered a fusilier. I get my look at my guns. Look, I got a bunch of brown buses here, so I'm going to give them a brown bus. You have to add that. And once again, I'm going to keep doing that. Brown Bess. We're being offered only um, Fusiliers. But then in the fourth fourth one here, we're offered Fusiliers, Mortars, a Supply Stretcher, uh, Skirmishers, and Artillery. I don't use the Supply uh, uh, Stretcher at all. Uh, you, you can you can get um, you can buy some wagons and do a um, supply wagon, a supply party down here, supply wagon that'll cart around um, ammunition and uh, provisions for you if you go um, deeply into um, 
the country and um, you, if you don't have supplies and stuff available then your men will start deserting so it's not something that you really need I don't think my personal opinion is so far I have not used them I don't think they're necessary but you're going to use you're going to need to um, either take mortars or artillery now when you look at the mortars um, this is an 8 inch land service uh, mortar and I have 36 okay and I haven't I haven't researched this okay so these 36 guns are are guns that I've captured so probably not a good idea okay for me and the only thing I can put in there you see with is that 8 inch mortar okay so let's go to artillery and now okay and you can see the standard third three pound four pound caliper guns the here's the six pounders that i've been uh, working uh i captured these 12 pounders from fort ticonderoga but i haven't researched them so um i had enough for one one company and um they lost the gun and so i had to switch them out and notice how i have a whole bunch of 5.5 um, um howitzers these these guns i have been building okay all right so in this case what i'm going to do is um i'm going to put a six pound fill gun my best gun is a 5.5 howitzer but at the moment i just want i'm creating this unit and um, i don't really see a threat so I've got those howitzers in reserve and I want to give them to my better, best troops. All right, so I'm going to add that to them. And then here, again, you get one artillery and one skirmisher per um, per regiment. Okay, but I'm not using um, these skirmishers because I didn't research their their gun. Okay, the hunter rifle. And that's probably a mistake, but that's the way I do it, okay? And so that is how you create a infantry regiment, okay, of fusiliers. You just hit create, okay? And there they are. Notice there's not enough ammunition, not enough provisions again. This is winter. Um, I, you know you, you've got there's buildings that you can build like warehouses and stuff but um, this area up here also isn't very good for um, for provisions and you'll find that um, when you come down here okay you, when you click on the regions it'll show you what what it pr primarily produces and so in this case it produces um, wheat which is provisions so a lot of lot of a um, lot of almost all of these produce wheat so that will help out um, in the big scheme of things of the war to get you more provisions but yeah you need to work a lot on provisions all right so that's the way that you create a a fusilier um, regiment a regular regiment and you do the same thing with um, a cavalry regiment you just slip, um, s uh, select cavalry um, it'll give you cavalry regiment and um, let me see I have one here and then you just give them the weapons So notice I'm using the short brown bess okay which is what you get when you um, research the normal brown bess weapon okay all right now there's another way there's another way see if I can find a guy okay there's another way that you can create regular units okay um, and that is by 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 training up a militia regiment into a regular unit and you see this icon over here and this is an upgrade militia to fusiliers costs money and it costs officers as you can see officers come out of here Okay, these are called spe specialists, and the specialists, they they are responsible for all kinds of things. They're not only necessary to create companies, but they're nece they're necessary to build buildings. You use up a lot of um, of um, 
specialists and the way that you get them is by building um, um, uh, what's the name of it now I forget uh, what's the name of it now yeah schools schools colleges so forth gives you um, specialists so you know you need to keep a pretty high amount of specialists especially if you want to um, get a large number of um, uh, regular regiments so like I say okay we what we can do is we can upgrade these guys and what we do is we click that button and boom just like that you see it just got changed okay I notice it used 17 specialists okay and so now I upgrade that unit okay now I come over back over here here's that here's that unit the nice thing is that it preserved the um, uh, amount of companies, but what it did do is it changed my artillery, okay? It uses 8-inch um, land service um, mortars, okay? Like I say, I have 36 of them because I captured them from the British, but I haven't researched them yet, so probably not a good idea for me to... Um, for me to... Um, uh, make a lot of these sw swap a lot of these guys out unless I'm actually um, have have um, researched this weapon and am building it okay but I have a lot of them so there, there I can I can do a few units okay okay using that um, that mortar then again I'm offered fusiliers skirmishers and I can you know do the same thing I did before Add brown buses. Add brown buses, and apply. Okay, so that's that's um, now you're seeing what happens after you've after you've um, got the fusiliers. You've got your line infantry. These are the guys that you're going to depend on to fight off the British when they make their um, invasions, and they make a lot of invasions. So, in this, for example, in this case here, you see I've got two two um, line regiments there there's another three there another one there and that's about it so but you you'll need those guys when the invasions come in okay they're really the the your strong infantry um, you can use your militia to extend your map as you can see i've already come up here i've conquered quebec but if I want to go further, okay, I've got other places. Probably want to use my um, my um, militia to do that. And when I look at the um, from relationships here, and I put it over here, it says um, the British army is weaker than us. Okay, so I've done a lot of damage to the to the British army. All right. So it's been quite a while, and um, let's take a look at um, what I'm do what's going on in my production. Okay, and as you can see here, it's expanded quite a lot, and I have 36 of 37 production points. So I have one extra production point that I can add in, and you can see I put a lot of of, of ammunition. I'm barely making civilian muskets, but I have over 5,000 of them, and um, I'm making brown bisses. 15 per day. I'm use, making the short brown best for, for cavalry. I have cavalry. And I'm making the howitzers, um, which um, which um, I'm going to slowly incorporate into my army. All right. And if you look here, I, once again, it shows you what you can build. And by clicking on it, you know, and apply then it will enter in the, to the queue ships I got a bunch of ships now and supply again you're seeing wagons and you're seeing ammunition I, so I have all of that covered so overall that cover that pretty much explains to you how you build your army um, and the different kinds of units 
that are available for for you to um, to put put on the battlefield. Um, all depends on your research, and um, as you research key key things such as fusiliers, uh, muskets, dragoons, what have you, whatever. If you don't want to use cavalry, don't use cavalry. Um, um, uh, this is this is what you've seen now is the just the basic um, case of um, how you actually create the units that you can create in the end. Now I do want to talk a little bit about some other things. Okay, one of them is reinforcements. Now the way reinforcements works here is that each city and fort um, will provide a certain amount of um, of um, uh, reinforcements. You see here there's recruits. And um, as you can see it says that there are not there are there are no recruits, okay? And there is assembled in to regiment eleven, okay? And upgrade uh, recruit facilities to increase enlisted recruits. So so um, that has already been done. This is, was a recruiting station. I upgraded it to a barracks. All right, but I'm not getting a lot of guys. And when you look at New York, you see I've got a lot of guys in here. Okay, I, I just you know I had a big battle taking over this area, and I had a lot of troops in here. And so now what I'm doing is it's during the winter, and so the British aren't going. You know, the British normally will invade you during the summer. So in the British, so in the winter, you get a chance to um, go on the off offensive, and you get a chance to try to um, sort out your troops. So one of the way, so when with all of these guys in here, okay, and I want to look at this map here again, okay. So this map shows you with these green lines how stuff is moved around during the game and that stuff is recruits ammunition and provisions provisions okay so let's go back over here and what we see is that for example let's go to Middleborough and you see they have 26 guys there okay and these are recruits and so th these um, cities based on whether or not you have recruiting centers and so forth and the size of them, they will produce recruits and they will slowly work their way around this um, um, uh, supply system to your units, okay? But one of the, one of the problems is, is that if you, if you have a whole bunch of them all stacked together, well then, you know, it's going to be difficult for them to um, get um, enough recruits to fill that, fill those um, regiments back up to to um, full strength. So one of the ways that you can um, kind of accelerate that process is, and and you can see it here, is that you can spread, you can send some of your regiments out to other cities, and that's what I've done here. And in New Haven, you see I've got this um, um, infantry regiment, and. Um, it is at full strength, okay? And over here I've got one, and these guys need a whole bunch, and over here I've got these guys, and there's a little green arrow going up, so they're getting recruits. Okay, so the guy in New Haven, I'm probably going to take him out and send him to New York, and then from New York, I've got this guy here, okay? And um, I'm going to take him and send him to New Haven. So by spreading out your troops especially during the winter. The winter gives you uh, a good opportunity to do this. Um, you can kind of accelerate the reinforcements. Okay, so I had to uh, answer a phone call and I changed, took off my headset so the, the volume and the may be different. I'm not sure on the recording. We'll see how it goes. Okay, but continuing with a f a f just a, f a couple tips. Okay, is that um, leaders are also very important, and um, unfortunately, we don't have an interface where we can look at all the leaders. And where the leaders really are important is, of course, your best best group. Okay, your best guys. Okay, and so um, 
you can either click on them or you can um, hover over them and you can see their um, their efficiencies okay and their and their different qualities and so what which you, re you really want to make sure that that these guys that you have who are leading your um, uh, your troops are giving good good um, good benefits to your um, regiment and you can see this guy has the green okay okay plus five soldier perks and officers impact plus seven so the green is that that's that's officers impact so even though he doesn't look like he's a very good officer with only 33 efficiency he's actually giving this unit a lot of um, bonuses okay so you should check I think the best time is it when you're moving your, your troops um, especially your 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 important um, fusiliers just glance at the 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 um, leader because he may not be so good and then in this case if you look at him this guy here he's really not so great okay let me go over here okay okay so he, this guy is really crap okay notice how he's um, giving negative impact to the qualities of this infantry regiment so probably best to change him and you see here he's got a four and a seven up here okay this is this is not really good what you're looking for is, a, is a, an officer with pretty um, pretty um, <clears throat> you know overall good good um, traits so let's try this guy and we'll see these numbers change quite dramatically okay you see there okay so every it changed a whole bunch so we apply that and so now that officer is going to be much better um, his his guys are going to perform much better on the battlefield so that's that's another kind of that's a little tip um, but your officers are important and at the very beginning of the game you you will you get a lot of uh, bad officers but as time goes by you'll get better officers and so you need to go back and you need to check your important units to make sure that they have um, good officers now the last point I want to make is that um, uh, most of the videos that I've seen um, concerning ultimate general American Revolution not a lot of people put much stock in cavalry but I use um, cavalry quite a bit okay let's come let's see here okay so look at this I've got three cavalry regiments here okay and this guy he's two star okay it's not showing it but he's two star all right and you look at his weapons and you see he's got a dragoon carbine 57 and the short brown vest 69 well I produce this and this weapon which is a better weapon than this um, um, especially for melee okay and this is what I usually use my dragoons for is melee okay um, I've got enough weapons here that I can keep a bunch of my companies with this with this um, with this weapon here from captured from captured stuff so uh, where are they good what are they good for I use I use them in battles um, at for example once you um, you're fighting the battle and once the um, um, the British let's say you win, you win the battle and the British decide to um, run away okay at that moment I pause the game and then um, any infantryman any infantry unit which is close to a British unit which can charge um, not all of them can I charge them okay and that's so that they charge into these um, routing um, um, units and capture them and the and the cavalry I I I I grab them three at a time normally and I send them against the farthest ranged 
um, units that are escaping me and they're usually pretty good at running them down so they they're real good at running down um, um, routing units at the end of a battle and they're very good at um, helping you out on your flanks for example taking out skirmishers and even going around into the rear and attacking um, um, artillery okay, there's another really good reason um, to have of course you need horses for this right so there's another good reason to have horses now this is foreign relations okay and what you see is the colonies France Spain and the British Empire okay and the rest are Indians okay now one of the things that you see you can try to influence these guys and a lot of people say that this um, diplomatic system is broke but I think that if you want the, the diplomatic system to work you have to understand uh, two things first of all um, not only um, first well there's three things first of all anything that you do with with anybody is only going to make an incremental change okay that's the first thing so that means that if you want to make a major change you have to go back several many times you have to keep keep going back and 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 and, neg and negotiating with these guys okay to change their stance okay um, uh, the second thing is is um, not only are you negotiating with the Indians but so are the British so your efforts may be canceled out by the British effort, efforts okay so you get a good result with the with with the with one tribe and at the same time the British are doing the same thing and so it cancels out and there's no change whatsoever so a lot of people say that it doesn't work but I, I don't think they've really explored it um, um, really um, a lot in depth and put a lot of assets into um, actually doing the diplomacy that's one of the games that, one of the parts of the games that I haven't also explored but one of the things that is quite interesting with these Indians is that you see what they will demand and they they like guns uh, um, supplies horses and ammunition okay so we're gonna try this I'm gonna try this with the Miami tribe okay because they have quite a high number here and as you can see a hundred will, will bring them into war and I want to keep them out of war you have a thing up here which is time limited so you can only do it every so often I'm not sure how how often you can do it to be quite honest because I don't haven't done it much but once once you've done it then it sets a timer and you see a little blue thing going around and then it will tell you when when it is available to be used again okay so so we hit that and we we click on the um, on the people that we want to um, negotiate with and it's very possible that the British are also negotiating with the Miamis okay to swing them to their side and that's why their numbers are going up so maybe you have to um, counter that okay so in this case um, to improve the relations what they're asking for is 300 muskets okay and if you do that you get um, supposedly a, um, a, a 10 uh, 10 points on their um, um, on their relationship with you but many many times okay what these guys will be asking for is horses and when they ask for horses they ask for a lot of horses and that could be anywhere from that could be anywhere up to 270 horses so if you if you want to consider actually using the um, uh, uh, diplomatic um, diplomatic um, resource then you need horses okay so even if you don't want to go do dragoons it's worth doing horses okay but like I say I find that dragoons are pretty valuable in battle So I think that pretty much sums up um, my um, presentation that I wanted to make in this tutorial um, of how you um, build your army. And um, in, um, in 
actuality, what we've talked about, all the things that we've talked about, are, are pretty much the core of this game. Now, apart from all of this, you have an economic side, and that's to earn gold, okay? So there is an economic side um, that is, doesn't have as much impact on the army, but all of the economics in the end have some Okay, for, but you know, for example, you have furs, you have commodities that you can sell for money. Okay, but the majority of the of the game, okay, we have in one way or another touched on in this co conversation. Okay, so um, it seems like a pretty darn complicated game, and um, but once you once you have to put and you have to put some time into it just exploring the game first to see how all all, all this stuff works and interweaves into it into each other to um um to and to how to actually play it but um i think it's worth it because this is a game which simulates logistics all right unlike other games strategy games which are a lot more mm, well you know it's kind of I don't want to say dumbed down, but it's it's very generic. Okay, so for example, you build a a a building that produces archers. Okay, um, that's not not a really good historical representation of how building armies and supporting them logistically. That, that is not a very good um, interpretation of that. While I find that this game is a very good interpretation of how um, the logistics and uh, play, how, 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 how important that plays into the game and how you can um, um, build that, build that logi uh, logistical system to support your armies, and not just um, building them, Building him is important. Weapons you use are important. Types are important, but so is being able to support them. Okay, and um, that's what I think kind of makes this game a bit different than any other game I've played, strategy game. And so um, I'm really enjoying it. I think they've done a, a, a really good job. Uh, I don't know if. Um, um, if you have the game, or if you're thinking about the game, or what have you. Um, again, um, the reason I do these videos is sometimes things are um, complex, so I, I want to do a video to, actually it's a tutorial, to help people to understand how it all comes together. And I also, the intention of doing these um, tutorials is for people who are maybe, you know, not sure whether they should buy the game or not and um, I want to give them more information as to wh how what are the mechanics of the game so that they can say oh well you know that sounds interesting or what have you or to at least to make an informed decision okay and not based on some paid youtuber and believe me I received no money for this okay who is is trying to act as a salesman, if you will. So I just try to present how the game works, and I leave that for you. Um, maybe it's to help you. Maybe it uh, makes gives you better understanding. This is the reason that um, I do these kinds of tutorials. So um, I'd like to, uh, in final, I'd like to uh, thank you if you've been able to um, have the patience to listen to me all along this um, way I do kind of ramble a little bit I try to get to the points as quickly as possible but then I end up blah 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 so um, thank you for for watching and um, I'm sure there will come uh, more videos and until then you all take care <laughs>